That's wrong. So they're both wrong, and they're seriously wrong. Thanks a lot, Jordan Peterson, for telling me how much of an idiot I am. I'm you got to know that there are differences in intelligence. It's really important. If you go into a job and you're not smart enough for that job, you're going to have one bloody miserable time. And you're going to make life wretched for the people around you because you won't be able to handle the position. And as you climb hierarchies of competence, the demand on fluid intelligence increases. And so, unless you want to fail, you don't put yourself in over your head. Well, what's over your head? Well, that's a tricky thing to figure out. I mean, you have to figure that out with intelligence, you have to figure it out with conscientiousness, you have to figure it out with creativity, you have to figure it out with stress tolerance, with agreeableness, because you want to go into a cooperative environment and not a competitive one if you're agreeable. And with neuroticism, you want, probably want to keep the stress level of your job relatively low, because those are all places that you can break down. And most that makes so much sense as to why people don't really want to try different things or try to go out for jobs that they believe is are bigger than them or bigger than their um, experience and whatnot, because they automatically believe that they're not going to get it. They don't. They don't believe that somebody is um, smarter than them. They just don't think that they're smart enough for the job. If that makes any sense, probably doesn't. But won't be the first nor last um, time that I said something ridiculous. Bit of one, if you're agreeable, and with neuroticism, you want, probably want to keep the stress level of your job relatively low. Because those are all places that you can break down. And That's most true. people have at least one significant weakness in their intelligence personality makeup. And you've got to be careful not to place yourself in a position where that's going to be a fatal flaw. But what you really want to do, as far as I can tell, if you want to maximize your chances for both success and, and let's say, well-being, is you want to find a strata of occupation in which you would have an intelligence that would put you in the upper quartile. That's perfect. Then you're a big fish in a small pond. And you don't, want to be the, you don't want to be the stupidest guy in the room. It's a bloody rough place to be. Oh, man. You don't want to be the stupidest guy in the room. Dude, Jordan Peterson has a way with words, don't he? Sheesh. Don't be the stupidest. I heard you don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. Now you don't want to be the stupidest. You want to be the, like, so I'm just, I don't, I don't care to be the smartest. Because then I won't have anywhere to go. You know, I don't already, y'all can't help me at all. Who, who, ain't, can't nobody help me anymore if I'm the smartest. But I don't want to be the dumbest either. So I got to constantly fight and, uh, uh, and, and position myself. So I, at least, at least, bare minimum, I'm second smartest. Bare minimum, second smartest. So, and you probably don't want to be the smartest guy in the room either. Because there what that go. probably means is you should be in a different room. Right? You should look at a place where, if you're right at the top, it's, you've mastered it. It's time to go somewhere where you're a little lower so that you've got something to climb up for. So, and I can, if you're not hyper-conscientious, for example, you're probably not going to want a job that you have to work 70 hours a week at because you're just not wired up that way. You'd rather have some leisure and, like, more power to you. If that's how you're wired up, there's nothing wrong with having some leisure. But if you're someone who can't stand sitting around doing nothing ever, then maybe you can go into a job that's going to require you to work 75 hours a week. And almost all jobs that are at the top of complex dominance hierarchies require very high intelligence and insane levels of conscientiousness as well. Gen He's a psychotherapist, correct? I asked a psychologist or something like that. Um, and I asked that because um, I know it's one of those that I heard he might have been um, before. I um, don't know if he still is, but his, his, his style of problem solving is having you and me figure out because only only we know what we really are capable of we've been in our bodies the entire time our body was a body so we know what we're incapable of i mean what we're capable of we know our level of intelligence conscious conscientiousness creativity stress tolerance agreeableness and all of those things so he just said if you you're this then you should do this. If you're that, then you should do that. And and he's like spot on all the time because that can never be wrong because he's talking about us and we got to look at ourselves through that scope. And once we look at ourselves through the scope, then we can answer the question according to us personally. 
This is nuts. This dude is a genius, man. This, he's very he's very intelligent. I like that. I like you can speak to everyone and not be speaking to anyone. Or you can speak to everyone as if you're talking to one person, like right there. Like I'm speaking to you and I'm telling you to do these things. This is this brother is smart, man. He's require very high intelligence and insane levels of conscientiousness, as well, generally speaking, as pretty damn high levels of stress tolerance. You know, because that can knock you out too, because there's going to be sh sharp fluctuations in your career, generally speaking, at the higher levels of a, of a structure. And you have to make very complicated decisions, often with very short time horizons. Yeah. So you have to decide if that's what you want. Okay, so how smart do you have to be to be different things in life? Well, if you have an IQ of 116 to 130, which is 85th percentile and above, so it's one person in eight up to one person in 130, I believe. I think it's 95. One person in eight to one person in 20. Then you can be an attorney, a research analyst, an editor, an advertising manager, a chemist, an engineer, wow. an executive manager, etc. That wow, that seems to be all of the super intelligent people. <laughs> okay, what's the next one? Because... <laughs> Because a brother ain't uh, qualifying for that one. <laughs> at all, man. At all. My gracious. I got to go ahead. I never had my IQ tested. I think I'm going to get it tested. Uh, I'm going to go on one of these videos and get it tested and record myself. And if it's horrible, I'm not sharing it. I promise. An editor, an advertising it. manager, a chemist, an engineer, an executive manager, etc. That's That's the... Now, that's not the high end for IQ, by the way. Oh, wow. You no, know, that it can go up. Well, it can go up indefinitely. I'll what? He must have. He must have knew what I was thinking, right? I see attorney engineers. Although there's fewer and fewer people as it goes up, so if you want to be the best at what you're doing, bar none, then having an IQ of above 145 is a necessity. And maybe you're pushing 160 in some situations, and maybe that's make, make, making you one person in 10,000 or even one person in 100,000. Wow. And then also, to really be good at it, you probably have to be reasonably stress tolerant and also somewhat conscientious when you think well why is it that smart people are at the top of dominance hierarchies and the answer to that in part is because they get there first right i mean everything they get there first i like that top of dominance hierarchies and the answer to that in part is because they get there first right i mean everything's a race roughly speaking and the faster you are the more likely you are to be at the forefront of the pack and intelligence in large part is speed that's not all of it is so if you're moving towards something difficult rapidly, the faster people are going to get there first. So IQ of 115, 110 to 115, so that's 85th to 73rd to 85th percentile. Copywriter, accountant, manager, sales manager, analyst, general manager, purchasing agent, registered nurse, sales account executive. I think that's me. I think that's me. I, 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 I feel safe saying I believe that that's me. I don't care what. Listen, listen. I know myself. I know myself. I think that's me. Uh, if you look at universities, the smartest people are, they're above this. Who are the smartest people at university? What do you think? Mathematicians. mathematicians. Physicists and mathematicians. Right, right. I could tell you who's on the other end, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, though. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, okay. Going down the, now, 103 to 108 is slightly above average, right? 60th to 70th percentile. Store manager, bookkeeper, credit clerk, lab tester, general sales, telephone sales, accounting clerk, computer operator, customer service rep, technician, clerk, typist. So you see at this level, people, are, people have some technical skill and some ability to deal with complex things. Okay, that might be my level right there. I didn't know it was going to be, because that level right there has a bunch of um, no respect, um, respectable um, jobs and um, and career paths and whatnot and and those people are smart as hell too. Have to be organized, have to be considerate, have to be selfless. Okay, that's dead average. Hundred is average. Dispatcher in a general office, police patrol officer, receptionist, cashier, general clerical, inside sales clerk, meter reader, printer, teller, data entry, electrical helper. How does this make y'all feel to be able to, to, to see this? Um, and I mean that as sincerely um, as possible because got to keep in mind that when he's saying that's dead average and then he goes on to name 
a great deal of um, occupations that might be some of you out there who are watching the videos. Um, so if you're a police patrol officer, receptionist, cashier, inside sales clerk, um, data entry person, or electrical helper, then you're dead average. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's saying that your IQ will qualify you for those positions. But if you check, if your IQ is less than that, then you won't even qualify for those. How does that make you feel? I, I would love to hear that in the comments, man, because um, a lot of times, y'all, well, y'all are starting to be a lot more open with me, and I appreciate that because it it encourages me to be a lot more open with you. So thank you for that. All right. 95th to 98, machinist, food department manager, quality control checker, security guard, unskilled labor, maintenance, arc welder, die setter, mechanic. Good, good IQ range for relatively qualified tradespeople. 87 to 93, messenger, factory production worker, assembler, food service worker, nurse's aide, warehouseman, custodian, janitor, material handler, packer. Now, what you're seeing, what you're starting to see is that as you move down the hierarchy, the jobs get simpler, they're more likely to be assigned by other people, or they're repetitive. Because what IQ predicts to some degree is how rapidly you can learn something, but once you've learned it, it doesn't predict how necessarily how well you do at it. And so, the more... So, if that's IQ, then I already know my IQ is pretty low, because I don't learn things very rapidly at all. That's just not... That's just not me. Um, I want to learn things faster, but I just don't. More repetitive jobs tend... People with lower IQs are more suited to more repetitive jobs. Under 87, is there something? Well, no. Right. That's a big problem. And it's something our society has not addressed at all. Jobs for people with IQs of less than 85 are very, very rare. So what the hell are those supposed, people supposed to do? It's 15% of the population. Wow. What are they supposed to do? Well, we better figure it out. Because one of the things that's happening too is that as the, as the high IQ tech geeks get a hold of the world, the demand for cognitive power is increasing, not decreasing, right? You want to be a teller? Well, you know, those checkout machines, they're not so simple. You want to work at McDonald's? You think that's a simple job? You don't see robots working at McDonald's. And the reason for that is that what McDonald's workers do is too complex for, for robots to do. So, well, so this is a discussion that no one wants to have, but that's okay. It's still a problem, and it has to be dealt with. So the U.S. government, it's illegal to induct anyone into the U.S. Army if they have an IQ of less than 83, right? It's about 10% of the population. Wow, he said it's illegal. Sheesh, so if their mental capacity is just, hmm, we're not, we're not, we, 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 we are not going to be held responsible for taking risk with that person, those persons. Because the U.S. Army, and they've been doing IQ testing since IQ testing began, because they want everybody they can possibly get into the Army, because in peacetime, they use it as a way of moving people up the socioeconomic ladder, and in wartime, well, obviously, you need as many soldiers as you can get your hands on. And so you're not going to be any pickier than you have to be. So when the U.S. Army says it's illegal to induct anybody into the armed forces if they have an IQ of less than 83, then you know that they've done it for absolute necessity. Right? And when people have made a finding that contradicts what they want to hear and they're doing it out of absolute necessity, you can be reasonably true that it's one of those facts that just won't bloody well go away. And so you might think, well, if there's nothing for someone with an IQ of less than 83 to do in the army, what makes you think that there's something that they can do in the general population? Wow. And then the issue is, you know, because the conservatives will say, well, they should just work harder. It's like, sorry, that ain't going to fly. And the liberals will say, well, there's no difference between people anyhow. And you can just train people to do everything. And what y'all think about that? Is, is that what y'all say? Um, there's no difference between people anyhow? And you can just train people to do everything? Or are you the ones that say they should just work harder? I guess it's, everything's out there is equal for everyone. Just bust your tail. How do y'all feel about that one? I think I know the answer to that one. And I, the side I lean on is there's no difference between people anyhow. And and you can just train people to do everything. Just work harder. 
I think it's a I think it's a marriage. I think it's a marriage between those two. Um I don't think that there's a difference between people other than you know, um, I think we're all the same. We're human beings. We we all bleed when you prick us. We all cry when we're sad. Um, you know, there's many things we have in common. We all go through the same things, regardless if we grew up on a different part of the world, um, um, which I'm now learning, thanks to you all for sharing. Um, but we're not all at the same level of intelligence or understanding, or we all haven't, some of us just feel so, down from failures that we can't really think about wins until we've tasted one. And we have yet to taste a real win. Um, It's very easy to consider yourself as, you know, well, I'm not even going to try to go that high because I already know what's waiting for me behind that door, failure or possibility of it. And And I just now got, through some tough stuff and paid off some debt that I was in. And I'm not trying to do that again. I'm fine. Just like this is I'm coasting. Not much trouble going on here. Yeah. I got bills and you know, it's, it's a little rough, but I'm good. I don't need to try no harder than this, but then you have the, they should just work harder. I also feel like people should just work harder for what they want. If you have goals and you, or you have, Certain um, certain things are just ruining your life financially. And you're like, I mean, if you want to get over it and pay for it, you want to get out of debt or you want to become um, smarter or you want to learn a, learn um, a trade or something, then, yeah, bust your tail and get it done. Especially if, you're, if your health is fine, if you got good health, and I'm talking about physical and mental health, then absolutely bust your tail, get out there and work harder, take a gamble on yourself and really go at it, go after it and you can finish. So in my mind, there's a marriage between these two because you can train people to do practically anything. That's why we have universities. Um, You know I mean? That's training in my mind. And, but those people who complete it, they're only, they only completed it because they decided to work hard. They decide to bust their tails. So they they both have to be married. It's not just one or the other to me. That's wrong. So they're both wrong, and they're seriously wrong. And the fact that neither side of the political perspective will take a good, cold, hard look at this problem means that we're going to increasingly have a structural problem in our societies. Because I said they're right. Both of them was it's like a marriage between the both. And he was like, no, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're extremely wrong. Thanks a lot, Jordan Peterson, for telling me how much of an idiot I am. I appreciate that. Look at this problem means that we're going to increasingly have a structural problem in our societies because we're complexifying everything so rapidly that you can't find employment unless, increasingly, unless you're intelligent. You guys are really going to face this, you know. Lawyers are disappearing like mad. And the reason for that is you can look it up online. Increasingly, you can do things yourself if you're smart. And so, like, the working class people have been wiped out pretty nicely over the last 30 years by by automation and various other things. It's the low end of the white-collar class that's coming up next. So I'm not saying that lawyers are in the low end, but low-end lawyers are in the low end of the white-collar class. So there's still going to be plenty of positions for people who are creative and fast on their feet and super smart. In fact, those people are going to have all the money, and that's already happening to a great degree. You know, because if you're smart and you can use a computer, you're so smart, it's just absolutely unbelievable, right? And if you can't use a computer, and I don't mean, you know, you can open Word. That isn't what I mean. I mean, maybe I mean you can program, and if you can't program, well, you're right at the next end. So if you haven't got that with you, you're, you're going to be left behind. I like that last part. You should be able to learn a computer, use a computer. Um, I agree with that. Technology is something else. It's something else, and it's... Not going to stay here. We already know that. <laughs> it's going to go. It's moving somewhere right now. And I'm sure I'm already behind um, in the next thing that's happening already. So once I find that next thing, I will be trying to learn that as well. Because uh, I don't want to be left behind. I do want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button or the super thanks button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. And once again, guys. Thank you so much for everyone 
who has been hitting that super thanks button it mean the world to me i appreciate it just seeing that level of support that you guys are showing it's a constant reminder that i i i'm on the right track that's all that's all i gotta say about that i'm van now we are all the lfr family and i look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully inside the patreon as well man y'all have been amazing love y'all